All right. So um, I know the, the three of you in the Hangout have already seen this, but for anybody on YouTube, if you are taking the course or uh, planning to take the course with us, uh, there's a link there. Um, if you could just fill that out so that we can get some um, statistics of who's taking the course with us, uh, we'd appreciate it. And these slides will be posted on our Google Plus page afterwards. So anybody that's came to one of our uh, meetups before will recognize these. Um, just to introduce ourselves, we're GDG Kansas City. Um, my name is Jay Wixit. And Kyle Paul is also in the Hangout. Uh, and Vince Garcia, who can't make it today, I don't think. Um, he's another organizer. Uh, if you need to get in contact with us for anything, um, those are actually our Google Plus profile pictures, so um, you can find us pretty easily. You can also find us um, on just about any social media source, uh, Google Plus, Twitter, Facebook. Our email address is there. Our website is ggkc.org. And we also have a GitHub, uh, GitHub page and post our meetups on meetup.com. Anything to add to that, Kyle? Nope. Nope. Okay, cool. <laughs> so um, we are here to talk about the Study Jams Android for Beginners course. Um, last Saturday, we had our first meetup and went over lesson one. Um, I think it was a big success. Um, and so we just kind of went through lesson one um, and got to 1B about halfway through. Um, so uh, right now we're kind of in the middle of the two meetups from last Saturday and this Saturday. Uh, next Saturday we'll go over lesson two a little bit. Um, hopefully you guys can finish that before then. If not, I'll talk through a couple um, high-level things. And if we can, I would like to start lesson three um, in class. So uh, after that, you guys will just work on the um, finish up lesson three and then work on your final projects. So um, I know I had mentioned this in the last session, but the final project is basically a any app um, as long as it does five things. It can be um, like explaining five steps in a process. Um, is probably the simplest thing to do, which is basically just five screens and you can swipe through. Um, and then on April 2nd, we'll present all the final projects in one big session, and you guys will get your completion certificates. So an example of what... Go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, an example of what people have been doing are... Um, you can see that in the... Google Plus community for students. So uh, if you guys wanted to check that out, uh, there is a link later on in this presentation. But So that way you can kind of get an idea of what some students have been doing. Cool. Thanks, Kara. So um, like I mentioned, hopefully you guys are in lesson two, um, but that's OK if you're not. Um, so if you had completed lesson one, um, it was basically about building layouts. Um, so we talked about basic views, text view, image view, button, the different kinds of view groups, um, those being linear layout and relative layout, how you can have a horizontal linear layout, a vertical lay linear layout, um, different styling options between sizes, the weights of um, different view sizes, matching the sizes of views to their parent views, and different colors and uh, padding around the views. Um, also talked about that it's pretty important to understand how to read documentation. So they gave, um, I think, a pretty good intro of how kind of the Google's Android documentation is set up. Um, but if you do need um, some extra help, you can you know, just basically Google for whatever you're looking for. And it's, it's usually pretty good to, uh, or pretty easy to find what you're looking for. Um, they did also mention a couple links that I wanted to, to be sure to post here, because I think they're good resources for 
if you're learning, if you're wanting to learn kind of above and beyond what the course is teaching, um, and that's basically anything um, the, the Android developers Google Plus page is there, and then also Google Developers has a YouTube channel that has a lot of good Android reference material. Um, and then after lesson one, you were asked to install Android Studio, which I know is uh, quite often difficult. <laughs> uh, so there's probably a lot of questions, and I know um, Eric asked uh, or has a, a question about that in a minute. So, um, so I'll finish this overview, um, and then we can come back to that. So um, I just kind of wanted to give a quick overview of what uh, Lesson 2 is all about, um, basically making the app interactive. So when you click on a button, there's an on-click method that gets, or a, uh, sorry, an on-click property in the XML. Um, and that's kind of what tells your layout what button to click. Um, and then from a Java syntax and um, concatenating strings, don't forget your semicolons at the end of the line, um, and some other slightly uh, more advanced stuff. So, And then I won't explain all these, but they'll be in the slides if you guys want to see them. Um, just some more useful links that I think that they posted in the video that were good enough to bring up again. So um, I know. So now I kind of just want to open it up to any questions you guys might have, um, any any concerns, any uh, tips that you want to give any other fellow participants. Um, and I guess we'll start with Eric because I know you had mentioned something before we started. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks. Basically, um, it was, let me, basically, it was, let me turn this down a little bit. Okay, so basically, it was uh, just, I had two problems. The first one was once I got Studio installed, I couldn't really track where she was talking about where you would say, hello, world. I really, I, I lost, I was lost there because I didn't see um, the adjustment she made in that screen to be able to go in and, and type in the code for hello, world. Um, and I, I kind of got frustrated there and felt a little overwhelmed. And then number two was, I just remembered this, was that with my Note 5, there's an issue with uh, sending the application directly over um, uh, with debugging, uh, using debugging. And I, I didn't realize that was a problem because I've never really plugged into my MacBook Pro with my Note 5. And so I had a little problems there. And I, I believe it's, after some research, it feels like it's narrowed down to maybe the USB cable. Um, I still haven't resolved that issue yet. But um, I know that's going to be an important piece, right? when you're setting up your application, because you want to test it on your phone first. Yeah. Uh, you can run it in a simulator, um, but I know in the course they kind of don't talk about the simulator in the beginning. Um, but, yeah. Okay. So, so that's, where I, that's where I'm kind of at with it. Um, uh, yeah, because I, I, I just stop right there. Yeah. Just, just to double check, Eric, uh, I'll, um, on part your second question, Mm -hmm. um, you do have just to, this is just a format just to make sure uh, like the turn it off turn it on again kind of question um, did you go in and become a developer and enable debugging oh yeah I already had that I already had that started because I kind of play around with ROM so I knew about that part I mean okay. I just it just was you know funny I just didn't work unofficial sources and okay so I, yeah I just yeah. wanted to double check that part because that, that was one question we had a lot last year during the study gen too was People didn't have that that setting turned on when they were trying to connect their devices too. So, yeah, it was funny for mine and anybody who has a Note Five. The one thing that I noticed is that it will pick it up. To, I mean, I have a lot of USB cables laying around, but this is so unfortunate that the USB cable that shipped with the Note Five actually is the pain point sometimes. And so, a lot of people have to go out and get new cables in order to find which one that works. And because I have a lot laying around, I tried every single one of them. And with one cable, I was able to see that it saw my device on my MacBook. But then after I tried it again, it just didn't work. And I tried different ports. I did everything I could possibly think of outside of pulling out my hair, and I'm already bald. So, <laughs> Yeah, that is interesting. Certain USB cables are power only. 
but yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure sure you know that too. But yeah, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, as Jay said, you might want to try the the emulator um, and see see that way too. Okay, and then I'll cool. let Jay handle the first question. Yeah. So uh, remind me again exactly what your first question was. Okay. So. Hello, she- world. Oh right. Yeah. Hello, world. Yeah. So what? Uh, are you not able to like get the layout preview to say hello world or or well, what exactly is the piece okay, working so, so for me when I okay so when I was following along with the install method and everything else when we got in the studio I, I chose the wrong layout but I saw that you could go back and pick the correct layout before it indexed everything and so I did that part, went back, but then when I had the screen, the Note 4, I mean, I'm sorry, the Nexus 4 as the device, I just couldn't see where she went in. It, it was kind of quick. I couldn't really find where she went in to say, hey, this is where you would put the code in in order to do that first Hello World. And, it's, it, and it, it may not be a big deal, but for me it is because that's like the indoctrination of a developer or a coder, so I want to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So let me bring up Andrew's studio really quick. Okay. I don't know if anybody else is having the problem when you get the rendering problem when he first pops up too. Like when he first I do a new project, it, it does a rendering problem and then it doesn't display the stuff right on the design view. Mm, I didn't I just see have, that part for uh, me. What operating system are, are you using? I'm a, I'm a Windows person. Okay. So are you saying Android Studio had a rendering problem? Or are you saying... Yeah, the Android Studio. So it, it's okay. just kind of a... Sometimes the rendering doesn't work right on the screen when you do that. You have to, like, change the version on it, the rendering version, I think. And that fixes it, like, from 23 to 21 or something. Huh. I think she said it in one of the slides, like if it displays this problem, this, like an experience yeah. problem. I do remember her saying that now. It was changing, like you said, changing the API in the preview. I'm just going to jump in real quick and say, now that I have Studio open and I'm looking at it, I actually see Hello World on the screen, but I don't know how I got there. I, don't not, I, don't, I didn't input that. Um... So are you, okay, here we go. So, so the, uh... oh, well, now I'm a little further, but, uh... I think when you do a blank project, it just puts it in there automatically. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it was it was it's titled "Happy Birthday," and I just thought there was something I needed to input in order to get that there. Um, yeah. So on the first one, she in the comments it mentioned select empty layout or empty activity instead of blank activity. That may. Be have caused some issue. Let me take a look. See that, but yeah, yeah, that's what I. Okay, so that's where I got lost at because I thought because I initially did empty, but then I went back because I thought she said blank, which would have you a button at the bottom. Yeah. And so that's what I have right now. Well, my computer's going slow since it's doing so much, but um, you said it's working now, right? Well, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, okay, so I have a button, a mail uh, envelope button at the bottom indicating there's something that could possibly be there. So I may be in the wrong um, activity, I guess, or layout. I, I, I swear, I mean, because I had empty at first and I went back to blank. 
I see you probably want empty. I think it, she says in the notes to do empty. The blank is in the video, and the empty is in the notes. If you have an okay, yeah. that makes sense. Is there a way to go back? I would have to create a new, pretty much start over. Or can is there a way to go back to read to choose the I guess the layout? You. So if you go, I think you have to start a new project in order to change the layout. Yeah, because if you just okay. create a new file, I was just verifying that really quick. If you just create a new file, it uh, that was weird that my video did that. It just creates a new layout, not okay. like a template. So I can just, I, I, what I'm probably going to do is just delete and start over and just follow a little more carefully and know where I'm at so that way I can get to that point. Yeah. Oh, actually, I just found where you can't do the template. Let me screen share real quick. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, too, like, um, like I think Chuck said this. Um, definitely uh, keep reviewing the instructor, the instructor notes at the underneath the videos. Because, yeah, if something, what they do is uh, other students who are taking the course, whether paid or through study jams, mm -hmm. they take that input seriously and update those speaker notes because they can't go back and re-record the videos all the time. Right. So what they do is they'll just put everything in those instructor notes down in the bottom saying, oh, here's how to do it this way or, you know, Here's things that work for other students, so that those speaker, no those instructor notes are very helpful as you're working through it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 can you hold that screen for one second? I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna switch back real quick and try to yeah. emulate what you're doing. I see. So Roger over on YouTube just said uh, we can fix it manually as well. So, so yes, there is a way, and it looks like Jay is showing it. I think. Okay, I see. Yeah, it's basically right-click on the the folder within your Java mm -hmm. folder, the package name within your Java folder, and then new activity, and then you can select from your templates. Is it going to duplicate the name if I rename it? Because I got activity name name to activity. So is it going to? Am I going to have to use a different name for that to be it's consistent? Called, or it'll actually automatically put something in here. If you look at my screen, it's um, the okay. new one is main two activity. Yeah. Which is kind of weird, but and then it's activity main two. So, um, although you're asking about the wrong, the layout that's wrong, will you have to rename that? Well, I saw the same screen that you came up with, and that's what I was I was making sure I was on track with that, so that way I didn't change something that I didn't need to change. Yeah. So it. Um, it may be better to. I haven't actually done this, so let me test this out real quick. Okay. Daddy. If you. Yeah, see, my screen is looking like yours because I have that Android test right underneath it. Yeah, and that's that's fine. Okay, so new activity, empty, and it did, okay. So in order to not have to rename your class and your mm -hmm. layout file, if you delete your main activity class and layout file first and then create the new one, it names the new one main activity. Okay, let me, go ahead and, let me go ahead and give that a shot real quick. Let me see where you're at on yours. So I got that one and class. Let me see where that layout class is at. Let's see. Okay, let me, see, let, me let me look at that real quick. Okay, I think I got both. So I'm gonna go ahead. And, I'm just gonna say this out loud as I'm doing it. So I'm gonna delete um, main activity, which is it doesn't have any any numbers behind. It's just straight up main activity. 
and then I'm going to go out to the layout and delete the class. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay. In mine, it said it was deleting the class in addition to that. Let's see. Problems found. It has three usages that are not safe to delete. So I'm getting this error box that says uses, uh, usages detected class uh, com.example.android.happybirthday.mainActivity has three uses that are not safe to delete. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. It's okay to just say delete anyway. Okay. Because that just shows that you have another file that's related to it. Okay. And in that layout, um, it was there was something I needed to delete out of that layout too, right? Um, just the layout file itself. Just the whole file? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I want to get that one. All right. All right, got that one. And then I can start fresh. Okay, cool. And I can go to the main one. Okay, I think we're cooking with Crisco now, so we're good. Cool. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. So um, just to make sure, it does show the Hello World then to you? Yeah, let me... Let me grab that real quick because I'm still I'm at where that uh, customized activity I'm finishing that up and see what I got going on here and I think we are good. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'm a little lost here now. I'm a little lost for a second. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so I'm I'm on the sidebar. I'm um, in the drop downs under Java and I'm 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 under the um, the happy birthday. Which was which has a main activity. I just can't remember how to pull up the uh, image to show the Note Four. I'm sorry, uh, Note Four Nexus Four. So you're actually in the XML. Yeah, yeah, I am. On the right side, there's a preview button. It's like turned to the side, so you have to read preview vertically. Okay. Let me see. Uh, da -da -da. Where are you at? Look at me. Where are you at? Yeah, I don't see it. You said on the right side, on the right uh, toolbar? Yeah. Kind of, okay. Right here. Let me, let me look at yours real quick. On the, over on the right side. Okay, gotcha. Let me take a look real quick. I was on the... I'm not afraid to admit, I was on the other right. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the other right. Okay, so I got it now. I got it. Okay, cool. But it says it, it says happy birthday. It doesn't say hello world. It says happy birthday. Uh, that's. Did you change it or what? Did it say happy birthday when you created it? That's that's what that's what it was when I created it was happy birthday. That's from my I, I guess from following the video. She initially typed happy birthday in the name. Oh okay. Yeah, that's probably why. But I get the concept, so I'm good there. Cool. All right, cool beans. All right, um, so you said that you already finished lesson one, right? Yes, one and one B. Cool. Uh, what did you think about it? Was there any like big um, like stopping points that you like weren't really sure about? Yeah, for me there was a point where I wanted to ask that question. Does it matter the order that you 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 put your code in? Because when I was playing around with the, um, I forgot what part it was. It was toward the end of it, where we had a lot of code working, and I just wanted to make sure that there was no. Is there a particular rhyme or reason why you have to have an order, or can you just kind of just go straight now in inputting what you see that you need? Like order of your methods? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Um, no, it technically doesn't matter at all. Um, as long as this, as long as the method is contained within your class, the order doesn't ma matter. Um, it does for like code cleanup purposes. It may be better to kind of organize like if this these two methods relate to calculating the price of the coffee, and then these two methods relate to displaying the price of the copy, it would probably make sense to leave them grouped. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't really matter in the end. Okay, okay. No, yeah. but outside of that, it was good. I mean, I, I, I played around with 
uh, some of the sample code that they provided in the analyzer, and it was it was awesome. I, I was like flabbergasted how how much you can really change and how it affects what you do. It was really interesting. Cool. All right. Uh, so, Kia, how about you? Was there anything? Um, I know you said that you you hadn't really got uh, much further in. Um, lesson one than where we finished on Saturday, but what did you think about the first part of lesson one that we did go over? It took me a couple. It took me like yes, so it um, reminded me a lot of HTML, so it, it looks like it runs pretty much along the same lines for any other um, front-end development. Um, it's just a, a basically learning the commands, I guess, for Android be um, where I need to come in at. So um, my husband, he's already experienced in Android development, so that's why I wasn't um, that that concerned about being a little bit behind at this point. But um, Thursday and Friday will be my main working days at this point to um, hopefully get all the way through lesson two and uh, get caught up to where you are. Cool. Um, I'm excited for you to get uh, get further in it. Um, with Android Studio, if you have any problems, uh, just be sure to let me know, and I'll I'll help you out. Okay, awesome. Um, James, how about you? Um, so far, um, I went back through one uh, A, basically what we did in class and um, just kind of played around with their XML editor that they had provided us. And, um, it, like, I can get all that stuff to work, but, well, like, when I started, um, you know, Googling, trying to find other things to, uh, you know, add more code or whatever, I noticed a lot of the, you know, the Android colon, um, you know, whatever, I kept getting errors saying that that's not supported, that one's not supported. And I'd go to the developer Android website, and it's in there, but yet this thing kept throwing errors that it was not supported. I have not put this into Android Studio yet. Um, I haven't had that, that moment. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. Um. So did you end up figuring out why that was happening? No, I still haven't figured it out. Um, and you said that was just from the XML visualizer that was telling you that? Yeah. Basically, what would they provided on Udacity, that class, you know, and they'd say, okay, click this and, you know, change this code. So I, you know, was Googling, you know, to add in more code and to, to make my little app that I want to make, and... I kept getting a bunch of errors saying that, you know, certain backgrounds weren't supported or, um, like, the Android... I'd have to pull it up here because um, I still have all this stuff open. Um, like, Android cursor visible, Android input type, Android capitalized is not supported. So, but I don't yeah. know if it's just because of their XML editor and it's not because it's an actual Android Studio or what. So I didn't know if anybody else had, had done that before. Yeah, that's my guess. Um, just because they would have to load like all of the resources that are available on Android, um, and they only really built that for the Udacity course. So that's, that's my guess why that's happening. Okay. Yeah, because I've been deleting things out to to make it work, and, you know, I'm getting the little sample phone, you know, that they have, I'm getting some of it to show up the way I want and, and things like that. It's just getting the more code in there to get the more, you know, the features I want in this, um, you know, for this class is, is where I'm at. And like I said, I know I need to get this into Android Studio to have the full version, so, but that's where I'm at right now. Cool. Are there I, there I, there? Some of, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I was gonna say some of those might be because, like Jay said, because it's just a simple XML editor. Um, but um, uh, out of curiosity, 
uh, it sounded like one of those that you were mentioning was um, one of the classes that, so it would either need the, the at symbol or the question mark in front of it, so just to be sure that you were using that as well. Okay. Well, see, that's one thing that I noticed also on the Android developer website. When it, um, like, it'll tell you, like, I like Android, um, I think it's like Android capitalized. Say I want to capitalize the first letter of every sentence. Um, it, like, it, unless I'm just not reading everything right or understanding, like, I get the part that says Android, you know, colon capitalized, but then there was, like, a zero, one, two, three whether you want like the entire word capitalized, just the first letter, you know, different options for that. But then it doesn't really say what to put after the equal sign to make it work. Does that make sense? So are you talking about all caps, that uh, text all caps? Right. Well, I just, so I want like the first letter of every sentence capitalized. Oh, gotcha. As as you know, a as a user enters text into this app, you know, and they go period space, it capitalizes the first letter again. That's the 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 flag I was trying to put in there. But I, I couldn't remember I, I had to re I haven't rewatched that video part yet where it showed and I think you showed it in class of you know, like a zero one two um, to put that in there, but then even some of these like Android input type after the equals, I really don't know what to put after that. Like what what goes inside the quotations? Yeah, so the the one that you're talking about, I think, is for um, input, like text input. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, let me pull that up really quick to show. Um, so what I did really quick, just to, to kind of show how I would figure it out. Um, so I just searched for Android text camel case. Okay. And then it came up with this. So the question is, um, if you have a string which has been entered by the user, how can you convert it to title case, um, which is basically camel case? And it looks like there's the set input type that you had mentioned. And then there's different input types which you can select. OK. So um, this is something that's def it's <laughs> definitely a little more than what we had covered in lesson um, one and two. Uh, right, yeah. Input type. I believe in Java it's called an enum. I'm not Java by trade, so um, forgive me if that's not actually what it's called, but do you know about like, enums and, and how those work? Sorry, you're getting choppy on my end. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're fine. It's, it's, so. Do you know about how like enums and structs work? No. I, I am... Like beginner, beginner. Okay. On doing this, so. <laughs> so, um, so just to kind of help you figure out what to do from here, then. Um, so if I saw this and I didn't really know what this meant, you could just kind of search that, and then the Android developers um, documentation comes up. Yeah. Gives you a bunch of different constants that you can use. Okay. You can't set that in XML though, can you? That's that's in the code though, isn't it? Yeah, you can also set that in XML. Oh, you can. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, in XML, I believe it's Android colon input type equals text cap words. I'm trying to find it in the documentation. Yeah, I put a link on the right. I don't know if that's it. Yeah, I clicked on it. I haven't really. Yeah, see this. Yeah. Okay, text oh. cap sentences. Type yeah. text flag cap sentences. I just added one as well. I think that's what you're looking for, possibly. Text cap words is the uh, uh, we'll, as as they're typing, it'll auto capitalize each word. Okay. First letter yeah, each word. that. Okay. Yeah, it's just I've been trying to do this about every night. Spend come down here and spend about an hour or so of a lot of googling and a lot of looking at that Android developer website. So and and trying to piece this together and so. I think Jay is talking, but we can't hear him. Oh, sorry. I had my mic. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, am I going crazy here? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, uh, um, James, do you have any other comments or questions or issues? No, that's all I've got. So, thank you. Awesome, yeah. Good question. Uh, Chuck, what about you? How far did you get in... Uh, what did you think about the course so far? Uh, I'm about halfway into lesson two. It, so far, it's going pretty good. I try to take the the other Udacity course first. The I think it's developing Android apps, so the beginner one, and it skips around a lot on that one. This one it seems to flow a lot better. So I got to a point in the developing, it's like they skip from like you know beginner level stuff all the way to the advanced level stuff. So this one seems to be going pretty good. And which one was it that you took? Well, there's... That was the one that we uh, gave last year. And, yeah, it was at that point a lot of people dropped off because it, it ramped up too fast. So that's why we're starting with this one, and we might go into that one later on this year. Yeah. Uh, so... Did you have run into any roadblocks or uh, have any thing that kind of got you stuck? Uh, I'm doing okay. I, I actually taken the uh, Team Treehouse course before this, so a little some is a little bit review, some is a little bit new. Cool. Awesome. So that was kind of my uh, um, everything that I had prepared. Uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Any uh, kind of questions? Yes, uh, I had a question about um, Windows 10. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's using it, but have there been any difficulties um, with the download or using using the console at all on Windows 10? When you're making chocolate milk. So I don't use Windows 10. Does anybody else have any input? Uh, I've got it, but I'm not sure what you mean by the console. What's wrong in here? Oh, uh, where, where, uh, while you're developing at all, um, are there any issues with the download, the first download that we're supposed to use? Um, because I know in the past, um, for other uh, SDKs, et cetera, a lot of people complained with Windows 8 um, that it just wasn't compatible. And uh, Windows 10 is the only laptop that I have right now. So I just wanted to know if there, if anyone has heard any of the same complaints now with Windows 10, or have they fixed um, compatibility issues across the board? You're talking about installing Android Studio? Yes. 
so far I haven't encountered any issues, but I don't know if anybody else has. Um, I installed it on my Windows 10 desktop and did not have any issues. It may have been Windows 8 when I installed it. I don't remember now. Um, but then I installed it on my work computer, which is Windows 7, and like I said, I haven't actually started any projects, but I did download it. I was able to launch it. Um, so, I mean, that's those are two different, you know, ones that I've done. From the YouTube chat, uh, Tammy is saying, uh, uh, turn off your antivirus, Kia. Uh, sometimes that prevents you from downloading Android Studio. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Cool. Well, if uh, you guys don't really have anything else, um, I kind of thought about going through one of like part of the course, but that'd probably be a little finicky doing it over Hangouts. So, uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and call it a uh, a wrap. Um, and actually, before that, let me bring up. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, Eric has one more question. Oh, yeah. We can't hear you, Eric. Oh, that's my fault. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay, so I had a real quick question. Um, is it possible that someone can explain to me, give me an, like an analogy to use, uh, the difference between linear layout and relative layout? To help me better understand that? Do you have something, Kyle? You look like you were about to... I had something, but if you have something already, no, go ahead. No, if you had something, I was going to have you go, because I'm looking up the slides. So okay, okay um, so uh, linear... Uh, I, I don't know about... I don't know, uh, Roger says he... Roger, are you on camera yet? Or uh, No, it doesn't look like it. He's from the Android chat. Uh, he's from the YouTube chat. But uh, linear layout is uh, where you're aligning views one by one, vertically or horizontally. Uh, mm -hmm. Relative layout is uh, in relation to views from its parent and other views. So um, yeah. So Roger from the YouTube chat says linear displays data either vertical or horizontal. Okay. Okay. So think of it kind of like um, when you're doing. Uh, I, do you do HTML? No, no. I'm more of a web developer, so I a lot of my analogies lean more towards web development. Is is it sort of like like if I had a table like a flat table and I'm stack, stacking cubes on it, I can look at that as a linear because I'm going vertically and horizontally. Is that a good way to think about it, or is that off a little bit? Yeah, to where uh, you're, you're either adding things horizontally or stacking vertically from top to bottom. Yeah, because uh, okay. it, it's one or the other in, in the container. Okay. And then with relative layout, it's... Uh, you get to pick where you want it. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, to where it's, it's relative to its parent or it's relative to another layout. So you essentially have more, I don't want to say more control, I'm just for lack of better words, I'm just going to say that. You have a little bit more control on where you want to put something in conjunction with the parent, but linear, you're going to, you're going to be basically, it's sort of like, what's the uh, what's the game that you play where you have to fill the pieces as they drop down? Kind of, um, kind of can't think of it. Yeah, Tetris. It's sort of like Tetris. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever okay. I that makes about, sense. That's, yeah, I that's about how. It, I usually think about linear layout being a table. Um, for a lot of things, you can have a linear layout going down. So the, the Google Now app um, is one thing that um, Catherine references sometimes 
in the videos. So the Google Now app has a lot of, you can, it may not actually be this way, but you can think of it as a long linear layout, but then within it, there are different cells. And so makes sense. then there's linear layouts within that. That makes that make sense. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. It, I, I'm, I'm a visual person. I'm a visual, very visual learner. And so when I'm thinking about things, I have to kind of put it in a sense that I kind of understand with something I can physically touch. That makes sense. Because I, I'm, I'm sitting at a table, and I'm looking at the table saying, it makes sense when you think of linear to start from the upper right, upper left-hand corner and just stack things across. Whereas if I had a sheet of paper on this table and I wanted to put another sheet of paper on top of it of lesser size, that would remind me of relative because I can kind of put it anywhere I want to put it, and then I have that other second piece of paper to drop it in there as well. So I appreciate that, and thanks uh, Thanks for, I'm, I'm jumping back and forth, but thanks, Roger. Is that Roger? Yeah, thanks, Roger, for that. Cool. Any other questions from anyone or... Uh from Tammy or Roger. I was going to pop in real quick. Uh, on Also in chat, uh, Roger says he uses Windows 10 all the time, and it works just fine. Uh, so that's another uh, for Kia's uh, question with Windows 10. Thank you. So just, I'm sorry, just for the sake of knowing that I won't be chastised or punished when I come to the Saturday me meeting, if, if we're at a point where we really just need like to have a one-on-one -on -one with someone just to kind of get us to that point, whether it's you guys or uh, somebody who's in the group, is that okay? Because I just want to make sure that I'm not messing anything up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's what, okay. that's what these are for. So, okay. yeah, uh, you can, uh, especially since Saturday is an all-day thing, uh, they'll be, I mean, Jay is going to be walking through, uh, as he said, get, uh, getting to where everybody is starting on session three. So, um, so yeah, I, I, will, I actually won't be there on Saturday, but, uh, yeah, we are definitely available if you need to reach out to us uh, before Saturday Okay. as well. And Good any other members in the GDG uh, community, uh, everybody is more than happy to help everybody. Cool. Good deal. Will you have any any links to the session on um, Saturday? I actually just found out that I have to be at the Capitol to speak on Saturday, and I won't be done until 1. Um, so that cuts a significant part of the day out by the time I'm able to actually arrive there. Um, so you asked if like slides would be posted or uh, if you would have any any way to plug in like will you have any cameras running for it to stream or um, would would I need to then just turn around and get on the highway to to get over to you guys? Um, well, I hadn't really planned on streaming since most of it is basically just going through. Um, okay. You got what? So you're coming from the Kansas side, right? Uh, yes, I'm coming from Topeka. Oh yeah. And that's, that's a bit of a drive for you to do just for a few hours. Yes. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't think... I mean, we can talk about doing uh, uh, a stream, but I don't know if there's much benefit from, from that end. Okay. Um, well, if I run into any problems during Lesson 2, can I just just generally ask the questions in um, in the group then? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, awesome. We have a channel set up in the Google Plus, uh, the GDG Kansas City community for study jams. So if you want to drop it in that topic, 
Uh, and then again, also, uh, as Jay had linked in his presentation, the, uh, the Study Jam uh, Google Plus community for students globally. So you can also drop it in there as well if, uh, if you wanted to get more feedback or if it's a larger question. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll post those links. Um, so here's the global study jam community. There you go. And then um, it'll take me a second to get to our uh, community, but I'll it'll be posted in the slides and in the comments on YouTube. It's not letting me, I, yeah, it let you post the, the links, but it's not letting me post any links. Probably because I'm the host. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so if you want to drop one to the GDG Kansas City Google yeah. Plus community as well, because I tried to do that and it wouldn't let me. Because uh, we, uh, Tammy, who's watching on YouTube, wasn't able to get it in. And uh, anybody else who's watching um, or uh, here in the chat, I mean, if you're here in the chat, you're obviously already in the Google Plus community, but um, anybody else, uh, you do have to request to join. We do that because of bots, so thank you, spammers. <laughs> yeah. There's the our study jam channel. It's within our community, and it's just a channel specifically for study jam. Yeah. So within that community, um, yeah, it's it's everybody who's going to be taking this course and other members from the Kansas City area. Cool. Any other questions or comments from anyone? I think no, I appreciate you guys doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. All right. I, I appreciate you guys as well. Because I'm not gonna lie, and I'm pretty pretty sure somebody's on here feels the same way. But this is a totally new language for me. I am. I, sometimes I do feel overwhelmed, and I kind of want to give up at certain points. But I believe this hangout kind of made me feel a little bit better that I got the support to help me get through this, so I can understand it. So I really appreciate that as well. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, thank you guys. Uh, well, I mean, if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't do this. So. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, we. I mean, we, this is all volunteer based again. So yeah, we. You know, it, we're here as a community to share knowledge. So. All right. Well, we'll call it a wrap. Thank you guys so much for being on here. Thank you guys. All right. Thank yeah. you. Good night.